Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to cover a very important topic that's known as correlation. This forms the foundation of what we're going to study later in the topics such as linear and multiple linear regression. Correlation is an important topic because correlation helps us study the causality. Why causality is important? Because in Six Sigma, most of the times we'll be talking about focusing on the inputs, focusing on the X's, and that helps us control the outputs, that is wise. It is often a band-aid approach when people try to only treat the symptoms and then the problems keep on reoccurring. And hence to derive a better control on the output Y, we need to study the causality. And correlation is the fundamental, is the very basic point where we start studying the causality. Let's get started. To put it in simple terms, Correlation determines the nature and strength of association between two variables. The variables that move in the same direction are called positively correlated, such as these. So you can see there is an x-axis and there is a y-axis. So we have a variable x and you can see as x is increasing, there is an increase in y as well. All these points, that is the yellow dots that you see on the plane, represent an ordered pair X and Y. Likewise, the ones that move opposite to each other are called negatively correlated. As you can see in this picture, these points have a downward slope and you can see that white line that's kind of trying to fit these points is sloped negatively. That is when X is increasing, there is a decrease in Y. So we call it a negative correlation. Now there is a third case that there is no visible pattern or a clear pattern that you can depict when you look at the plot. So we can't say that this is sloped downwards or sloped upwards or positive. So we'll say that there seems to be no correlation. The strength of correlation depends on the density of the XY ordered pairs with the fitted line. Let's have a look. So as you can see, the picture on the left has these points somewhat closely bound to the fitted line, whereas the picture on the right shows that these points are somewhat loosely bound compared to the first picture. Likewise, for a negative correlation, we can see the picture on to the left has points somewhere closely bound to the fitted line, whereas the points on to the right are not as closely bound. So looking at the picture or looking at the chart itself, in some cases, you'll be able to comment on the strength of correlation. So the degree of association or the strength of correlation is represented by R and is known as Pearson's correlation coefficient. Let's say we have an ordered pair X and Y, where X and Y both are continuous. Now you don't need to be scared of these formula because most of the work that we do is simplified if we are using a software like Excel and all you have to do is apply a simple formula as you see below, Corel and it, you just put array one as X and array two as Y or vice versa. It actually doesn't matter in Excel because you can see this formula out here are pretty symmetric. So you don't have to memorize the formula. It's just that I'm showing you the formula. These two formula give you the same output. If you will calculate it, you will see that you get this result. The important point that you might want to note here is while calculating R, that is a Pearson's correlation coefficient, the components that are looked into are, of course, the individual values of X and Y. And we also look at the averages represented by X bar. And we look at the standard deviation of the set of X's and the set of Y's. Nothing to memorize here, just an observation that you might want to take along. Most of the work that you do would be resolved by just applying the formula, which is the Corel formula as stated here. Let's understand the coefficient of correlation a little better. It ranges between negative one to positive one. Negative one means a perfectly negative correlation and positive one means a perfectly positive correlation. And R is equal to zero when there is no correlation. In general, if the magnitude of R is greater than 0.9, we call it a strong correlation. It could be negative, which will be strong negative correlation, or positive 0.9, which is a strong positive correlation. If the value of R lies between 0.7 to 0.9, we call it a moderate correlation. 
and if the value of r is less than 0.7 we call it a weak correlation now if you read books these numbers might vary a little bit but the important thing is that you should not be confused with r square we are talking about r here which is pearson's correlation coefficient and not r square which is a coefficient of determination that's covered later two most important takeaways that we have from correlation and which are often misinterpreted are number one we should always plot our data the picture here represents Simpson's paradox and you can see a Wikipedia reference here below uh, the link has been provided you can read more about it if you want but the point that we're trying to cover is that all these four pictures have something in common and if you see the table onto the right you will see that the mean of X's so each point on these four pictures represents an XY ordered pair the mean of all X's that have been taken the variance of all x's that have been taken and so is the case with y all averages and variances are equal and hence as per the formula the value of r that you compute the pearson's correlation that you compute is same 0.816 the fitted regression line that you will form here would be again the same the equation is y is equal to 3 plus 0.5 x still you can see that not all of these represent the same kind of linear relationship. A correlation represents linear association in terms of degree of association and direction of association. Therefore, just looking at the value of R, that is Pearson's correlation, it is not sufficient to assume that there is a linear relationship. You might be making a big mistake. And hence we recommend you should always plot your data and try to interpret correlation only once you've established that the data points are linearly associated. Otherwise, the value of R has no meaning for you. Another very important takeaway, and you will see it being emphasized everywhere whenever this topic comes up, is that correlation does not necessarily mean causation. I'll give you a very simple example. Assume that X represents the salary as people have grown in the organization over the years. So typically you see that when you get your promotions, your salary continues to increase. And let's say the axis Y here represents the pollution level in a city where there have been constant efforts to control the pollution level. Now, if you see there is a correlation which is negative. So will it be fair to interpret that as the salary of people increases, the pollution in the city comes down? well may or may not be the case and that's why it is said that we need to be always very careful before we draw conclusions that point towards causation and causation means there is an equation which is like a y is equal to fx the popular six sigma equation is what we call it that you control your x's your inputs and your output or symptoms automatically start coming under control in order for us to be able to confidently say that there is a causation that's present we need something called as an experimental evidence and what is an experimental evidence it is as if you're performing an experiment in a chemistry lab uh, and you're trying to see that if you add this much volume of a chemical A with uh, this much volume of a chemical B, this is how the reaction happens. And if you increase the volume to a certain level, this is how the reaction would change. So the experimental evidence is supported by the characteristics of experiment. And a very important characteristic of experiment is that it needs to be repeatable. So if I do it here and I do it 10,000 miles away, if I am doing it in the same environmental conditions, the output needs to be standard. And that's where it is repeatable. So that pretty much covers a crisp introduction to the topic of correlation. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and please share it with your friends who might get some help from this. Thank you.